Yeah, what happened to that? I'll tell you, Andy. I'll tell you what happened to that. Yeah, dude. In 1996, they deregulated radio. And that was the 1996 Telecommunications Act. And what that did is it released all uh, federal and, and local restrictions over what company could own as far as in a market. It used to be you could only own two radio stations in a market. So if you lived in Great Falls, you and I could only own two stations. Our neighbors could own two more stations and so on and so forth. After deregulation, um, we could own a gazillion channels in a market. Hence uh, the uh, radio homogenation, which is the shift from local stations airing local DJs to regional stations airing pre-recorded programming, central casting, all via internet, satellite. Uh, it no longer is cost efficient to hire me to be in your company because it's all done for me. Um, it wasn't like that when I, when I first started in radio. It wasn't like that at all. Um, when I first started in radio, I came to work and I had two turntables and a stack of albums. And what I had to do was pick out whatever we were going to listen to that morning. We did contests and request lines, you know. I want to dedicate this song to Sherry. I'm so in love. Yeah, we did all of that. Um, it was a specialized position. You had to know music. You had to know how to run everything. And you had to know how to work by yourself without someone helping you do all of this. Um, I started in radio... 1968, that tells you how long I've done it. I've worked in Windsor, Ontario market, right across the river from Detroit. I've worked in Missoula market, Lincoln, Nebraska market, Fort Lauderdale market. I, uh, when uh, Captain Rod was still alive here, and I used to go up on Thursdays and help them out a little bit, but it isn't really working in the Great Falls market. Um, but I, I mean, I remember my first playlist. Um, I have it here, as I knew we were going to go this way today. I was just going to, I have my first playlist that I played in 1968. This was with no prompting, no one helping me out. I played the following five songs. Pushing Too Hard by the Seeds, Journey to the Center of the Mind by the Amboy Dukes, Year Blues, the Beatles version off the White Album, Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers, and Ichigo Park by the Small Faces. My fr you won't hear them songs on local radio if your life depended on it. Now, I mean, it was tough being a DJ. It really was. It was, you had to know everything. Yeah. Um, nobody wanted to hear the, the, the newest Stones song. They wanted to hear what else was on the album. And albums, for those that don't know, were 12 inch vinyl thing, records, that you put on a player and a turntable and a needle go on it, and you could hear Communication Breakdown by Led Zeppelin. Radio has changed so much. Now, it's all automated. Um, the DJ that you hear doing the morning show on one station and the afternoon show on another station locally, you can bet your life it's not live. They're not working 10-hour shifts. I don't think they... they I used to work a four to, eight, four to six shift, just depending, is what I did. And... Now, 
it's just it's all automated. You can tell it's automated. It's sometimes not in sync. They'll play, you know, a certain cadence of songs, and then the announcer will be saying it's a different group of songs. Yeah, it was Led Zeppelin. No, that was not Led Zeppelin. You don't play Led Zeppelin, but you do play, you know, Back in Black till I I can do. It. Okay, so it's out of sync. You can tell. You can tell it's not live. The weather. When I was in radio, I'd like, hey, partly cloudy outside, a little cold, no wind's blowing, it's about 32 degrees. Corporate radio, it's going to be sunny today, it'll be dark tonight. Seriously. No creativity is needed to work radio anymore. I can't get a job if my life depended on it. 35, 40 years experience, work from coast to coast, some of the bigger markets in the United States. I can't get a job here. I'm a free thinker. I have my own playlist. <laughs> I come to work, I'm going to bring on a thumb drive, 303 songs that are on my playlist. Probably 30 of them you'll hear on local radio stations. The others, 270, you won't. But you'll recognize them as soon as you hear them. You're like, holy crap, I haven't heard that forever. They take... Radio killed the radio star. Not video. Radio. Corporate radio killed the radio star. Corporate radio will not hire someone like me. A boomer who has 40, 35, 40 years experience. They will hire... A 28-year-old, 22, 21-year-old kid to play everything from the Beatles to Pearl Jam. Now let me first go there with classic rock. For those of you who don't know, classic rock isn't a jumble that you can just shove everything into and call it a package. If it's over 20 years, it's classic rock. Really? I got an old Plymouth Voyager that's 23 years old. It's a classic. I call bullshit. I'm corporate radio. Classic rock is a genre. Started with the first British invasion, which would be the Yardbirds, the Zombies, the Animals, uh, the Kings, uh, Herman's Hermits. Uh, the second wave of that invasion was the Beatles, the Stones, the Who, the Moody Blues. You may have heard of some of those bands. America, on this side of the pond, we countered with the Beach Boys, the Doors, Jefferson Airplane, Jimi Hendrix, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Quicksilver Messenger Service, Bob Seger, Canned Heat, and Classic Rock Rolled. Rock and Roll, see what I did there? We did this until, it, well, and it was a time of protest songs, one-hit wonders, uh, peace and love. It was an era, okay? Fall of Saigon was in 1975. By the fall of 1975, uh, Wild Cherry, Average White Band, uh, bands like that were, were taken over the airwaves, and... By the next spring, Staying Alive and the Bee Gees had, had blitzed America. Classic rock was dead. That went on for a while. We had disco for a bit. Then came a couple, three bands, I think, that ended that. And that's Def Leppard, Van Halen, and ACDC. They put a nail in the coffin of disco, and then MTV, rock and roll, uh, heavy metal all took over. If you think that Motley Crue is a classic rock band that deserves to be in the same set list as the Kinks and the Beatles, you're absolutely nuts. Tommy Lee came out in Rolling Stone magazine in an interview with Tommy, and don't dismiss him. I know people are like, oh, it's Tommy Lee. Yeah, he's a billionaire, all right? Played one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time. Okay, and he said in Rolling Stone magazine in an interview, I hate it when they put us as a classic rock band. Stephen Percy, the lead singer of Rat, 
echoed those same sediments. They don't like it. They're not classic rock. Classic rock stations in this town or in all over the country beat you to death with the same 15 songs, the Beatles, that southern rock band, that Motley Crue song, More Than a Feeling by Boston. It must be a federal damn mandate that uh, every classic rock station in the nation must play this song 19 times a day. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. Satisfaction and honky-tonk women. You know, the Rolling Stones did have six, seven albums in that era. The Mick Taylor years kicked butt, you know. But no, you got to play honky-tonk women 900 times a day, you know, when you got Monkey Man, Live With Me, anything off of Exile in Main Street. Hi they. Do they beat it to death? Aerosmith. Is there a classic rock station that could go one day without playing Sweet Emotion 19,000 times? Huh. Dream on. It's not a specialized position anymore. All you need to do is know how to push buttons, pull levers, read a computer. When I I've had experience with some local radio stations, and I'm not going to blast anybody on a podcast like that. I went in to interview for a corporately owned chain radio station, and we sat down and started, you know, I was told looks like you got a lot of experience. All of our music, you know, you know how to run a wheel. We have, and I didn't know what that was, and I don't know if they do that. It was like, it's a set group of songs that are, you know, you'll pre-record, you'll play. And I told the guy, stop them right there. I'm like, whoa, I got my own playlist. Oh, I bring it with me. It's WAV files, MP3s, whatever you want. If you want me to go home and get albums, I can do that. We don't allow that. So I told him that I... I have a problem playing disco on a classic rock station. In fact, I have a play problem playing grunge or any of that. I mean, you can't package everything into one station and say it's classic rock. Classic rock stopped in 75. And we had disco. Then we had industrial rock, punk rock, the Ramones, Sex Pistols, Blondie. Okay, then in TV came along, we had heavy metal rock. We had glam metal. We had heavy metal, hard metal, thrash metal. Had Metallica kicking Dave Mustaine out because he had a drinking problem. Dave Mustaine goes on and forms Megadeth. Now we got two great heavy metal bands. Don't ever play either one of those bands on a classic rock station. You don't want to get Lars mad. He'll sue you. I don't know what to tell everybody. A lot of people have talked to me about the, the, the radio. And they're like, why aren't you on the radio? And it's because they don't do call-ins. They won't let me let you call in. And they won't let me call. Can you imagine if one of the local radio stations hired me and all of a sudden I started playing Savoy Brown and Uriah Heap? Their heads would explode. <laughs> it's a shame. Now, since the Telecommunications Act in 96, iHeartRadio and Clear Channel Radio own 80% of all the radios in the United States. All the radio stations are owned by them two conglomerates. Everybody sold out. The people that still have hung on to their stations, and they're, and they're out there. They're not many, but they're out there. Some are making it. Some aren't. Okay? Um, you got to work at it in this day and age. You have apps, you have the web, you have a way to reach millions of people right away if you market it right. 
Um, I did a look at our, our here in Great Falls. We have two major, major corporations that own pretty much over half of all the radio stations. And you'll either hear the same classic rock song or grunge song or heavy metal or disco on those channels or the newest pop country, sickening. I don't even know what that is. I mean, all you got to do is... <sighs> I, I think I'll write a song. What do I need? Trucks, beer, blue jeans, moonlight. All right, we got a hit. Oy vey. <laughs> um, there's a solution for the for the, the, the uh, locally. We I said Monday we have the two conglomerates, and I see a lot of there's a lot of church radio stations. You know the low power FM's. A lot of talk. Comedy, it's all the same to me. Talk, comedy, church, you know, it's all kind of not real hard to do. Um, you market a classic rock station, you bring in a classic rock DJ, you start taking requests, you start giving away prizes, you start making your presence known in the community. And I don't mean the truck once in a while, I mean drop in, like I do. I drop in. Kind of take my example, radio stations. Get your help and drop in at the 3D. Say, hi, we're here to just surprise you. That's what I do. That's how you'd make it go. Okay? Play classic rock. Okay? The boomers. Baby boomers. Baby boomers. When I was a kid, I remember growing up in the oldies channel. Andy, remember the oldies channel? Oh, yeah. Okay. And mom and dad were listening to the oldies channel. There was Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Tony Bennett. And it was all the stuff they grow up listening to. I'm a boomer. I'm the biggest spending market there is. I don't want to hear about the 19 to 30 year olds. Oh, they got millions. We're old. We got money. And there's nothing suited for me to listen to. If I will listen to the rock station, or I listen to one classic rock station, he, he might, they might as well just rename it the Van Halen station. Every set, they have a Van Halen song in it. You know there's rules against that in the FCC. You can't play the same artist every set all the day long. There's, there's thousands of artists and thousands of songs out there. Get with the program, people. It's my pet peeve. I worked my whole life doing this. And in 96, I was out of a job. Because I make waves. Because I have a strong personality. Because I don't look well on camera. Because, you know, start doing the whole Chris Farley thing. You know... I shouldn't be around small children. I eat my own scans. I mean, the whole Christmas. They, they won't hire me. They won't hire me because I'm a strong personality. Because I know my music. I grew up doing this. If you think a 30-year-old, 40-year-old DJ knows more about classic rock than I do, who went to school and grew up listening to it in one of the largest markets in the United States... You're sadly mistaken. This is what was a job to me. It was a really hard job. It was specialized. I had to come, like I said, I came to work with a stack of albums and two turntables. Today, Wolfman Jack would never, ever make it. It would never fly. They don't do that. They don't allow individuality. I'm so tired of corporate radio. And radio homogenation. I'm sick of it. Anyway, Andy's giving me the hide sign, giving me the stop, complaining about radio. Um, so we're going to wind up. Every week, I wind up with a little piece on the Ukraine, and every week people are like, we know what's going on, we know what's going on. Obviously, you don't. So let me explain to you what's going on. The Russians are committing war crimes. 
Everybody's saying it. Evidence says it. They're executing people. They're raping. They have internment camps, which is just a nice name for concentration camps, and shipping Ukrainians out on trains. I keep covering it because people keep complaining about other things. I come from, my parents were heroes to me. And my parents would not, in their generation, would not sit around complaining about groceries and gas. In fact, they didn't. They went and did something about it. They stopped Hitler. My dad fought in the South Pacific. I said it before, I'll say it again. He fought in World War II. Other family members. They wouldn't have took this lying down. But now we have social media. And everything's red and blue. And everything's black and white. And everything's left and right. And everything's in and out. And everything's this and that. They're committing war crimes. When's enough going to be enough? I think America's being weak. And I think the only thing that Putin's going to understand is power. And if you're all worried about nuke, oh, you can't do that. Pipe branch, we'll all get nuked. We're all going to get nuked. You think this is just going to play out and he's just, he's getting beat right now in Ukraine, right this second. Okay? I hate to start your week, your Monday morning with reality, but you all didn't pay attention in Syria, did you? So, I keep bringing up the Ukraine because they keep committing war crimes. And they keep killing dogs. And they keep killing children. And they keep raping women. And they keep putting people on trains and sending them to concentration camp. And all people in America can do is say, Oh my God, gas is so expensive. Blow it out your ass. Good, Andy? Good enough. All right, then. We're going to wind it up this Monday morning. I think that we pretty much vented on mm -hmm. corporate radio. If you're not listening and you're, you're dissatisfied, Call them ain't going to do any good. Uh, I suggest apps or even maybe find me a place to work and I'll play music four hours every day and take your request. That Sound good? Yeah. That sounds good. All right. good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again. Remember, learn to duck and cover because it's coming. Kiss your dogs. Have a great week, everybody. Andy, we're out of here. We're out of here. We're out of here. See you, everybody. <laughs>